Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. After six years in development, the long-awaited National Integrated ICT Policy White Paper has been gazetted. Natasha Odendahl has been following the story and she joins me now. Welcome Natasha. Hi. So this document has been a long time coming. Can you outline the activities that led to the publication of the White Paper? Sure, well, in 2012, the then Minister of Communications, Dina Pule, decided to review all of the um, legislation surrounding, or the policies surrounding ICT in South Africa. The reason is because our policies were long outdated. I mean, we're talking about 20-year-old policies um, where the pace of technology had already outstripped the policy's usefulness. The review was put in place um, in a way to see if we can catch up um, with our policies in line with the technology as it moves forward. So the review carried on for about six years. A green paper was published in 2014. It has been a bit delayed, but it was eventually, you know, obviously gazetted now last week, um, the white paper, so that the policies are in place and we can move forward with that. And what are some of the guidelines that are outlined? Well, it covers a broad range of all the elements governing ICT in South Africa. Um, the paper is trying to pretty much cover everything um, in one document. The, the most, that's well, some of the highlights of the paper include um, open access. They're looking at open access networks. They're looking at um, interventions to reinforce fair competition, to facilitate innovation. They're looking at convergence and open internet. Um, digital transformation, supply side issues and infrastructure rollout, which is one of the biggest issues we have, and universal service and access. It also sets out plans to establish a wholesale wireless um, open access network in um, what they describe as a public-private consortium um, to roll out. Well, it's a public-private uh, managed and owned consortium with selected private companies along with government rolling out this open access network. Spectrum management, which is also in the spotlight, um, has been highlighted as well. Um, a stance of openness, uh, a shared approach to spectrum use has been adopted. That's to try and reduce duplication in the market and to establish a service-based um, competition in a way that the current uh, structure does not actually apply. But there is still uncertainty and criticism. Yes, there, there's a lot of mixed reactions to this document. Um, while the overall idea is that it is a good document, there are some very big concerns that a lot of people in industry have about it. Um, the one being that you know, the contents of this policy is supposed to ensure stability and certainty in the market. Um, the approach taken with the wholesale networks actually raised some concerns about whether we're not going to be establishing a monopoly. Um, you know, with a network consortium having exclusive access to Spectrum even. There's still a little bit of uncertainty surrounding about how this, um, you know, wireless network is actually going to operate, um, who's going to be involved, what it's going to take to get involved with that, and what's going to happen with the current infrastructure that's already in place. Part of the issue is that the n open access network that is being proposed will stimulate competition only at a service level which it mo most of the operators here don't play at the service level only, so it might actually heighten you know, costs that are involved. It might uh, lessen competition, if you will, at, at a lower level. The spectrum management also raised a red flags. Um, the document proposes that it's treated as a public good, but with the auction-based structure of ECASA actually being criticized by the document, the document is now proposing all sorts of other ways of managing the spectrum that could end up leading industry to worry about whether they'll be able to keep their spectrum or not um, and what will happen in the future. You know, I mean, this high demand spectrum has been an ongoing battle for, for many, many years now. Um, and ICASA earlier this year actually opened up the spectrum for auction, um, which was uh, welcomed widely by industry because then now they can actually finally get a move on. They can actually stop refarming the spectrum that they have and then start you know, working towards the future technologies that we need. But then the Department of Telecommunications and Postal Services actually blocked the move. It took it to court and had the auction stopped. So ICASA is unfortunately now not able to move forward with their plans. The department wanted to 
have the spectrum policy actually finalized before it moves forward with it. Um, that's mostly because the department actually believes the auction-based processes maintain the status quo and are actually tipped in favor of those who have the funding available. The document also just states that the this, this scarce resource should actually rather just be shared um, with the bulk allocated to the open access network, which is where the obviously uncertainty around the spectrum is now emerging. Well, the DA believes that while the content and the concepts of this document are actually sound, some of them are, are ultimately decent, um, it, they believe that it will fail to actually bridge the digital divide and reduce the cost of communication which is exactly what the document was developed for. Um, other de deficiencies that have been pointed out include the entrenching of ministerial intervention over critical components um, in the ICT sector. And yeah, there are various other ones that's, that have been pointed out as well. We will have to see how it actually plays out um, as it goes forward, as the implementation of this policy goes forward. Um, a lot of questions remain on how it's actually going to be implemented and how the proposals will be pursued. But time will tell how, how we work this out. Cool. Thanks, Natasha. That's the second psych show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.